line here, uh, um, he, and he wouldn't have this plus here, you just have a, a solid line going all the way down to, to here. Okay? And uh, so then this plus, where did, it, where did it get generated? I mean, where, where did it come from? So whereas having it this way, it's clear that this plus came in this expression. So I, I, I find this approach uh, superior to, to Sips's. Anyway, that's, that's, that's for, for, you, for you to judge. All right. Uh, now this, this, uh, this particular grammar, is very, you know, this set of rules, um, does not uh, use the, doesn't capture, it doesn't, you know, what's the word? Well, that's the technical word you hear used to capture. It doesn't capture the, M, the precedence rules. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't use them, the, the precedence rules of ordinary arithmetic. Okay? So you get, you get this uh, ambiguity. Now, uh, point four, the, you know, the fourth tip, um, here, here we might find it useful to... Uh, to give an illustration of, of, of using the fourth tip in this, in this context. So how, how to avoid... Uh, now if you want, if you want the, uh, to create a grammar that does have precedence, for example, um, so you want this to have precedence, you, know, you want these, these three to be grouped together rather than these three to be grouped together, well then you'd... Uh, how would you do that? In all the various ways. We'll say you're using parentheses. So, um, well, then you'd have to change these rules a, a bit here. You'd have to bring in terms that involve parentheses in such a way that uh, once you've got parentheses, um, you don't get ambiguity in how to do that. <laughs> I don't think I'll go into that. <laughs> like I say, design is an art, right? Uh, and it comes with experience. Uh, some people have a certain flair for it. You know, some people are bit better designers than others. Uh, okay, I'll, that, that's, that, that's, that's all I'll say. All right. Uh, okay, so um, have, a, have a look at... Uh, G4, so that was example 2.4 that we did in a previous board, okay? And that grammar, G4, uh, the grammar involving uh, generation of arithmetic expressions, it, it had uh, parentheses. Now, it, it was not ambiguous, right? There, there were no uh, different parse trees for the same string. All the strings had a, had, had a unique parse tree, right? Uh, here, whereas um, whereas G five is ambiguous, so this 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 is, this is G five, and it generates the same string with two different parse trees with quite quite different structure. You can just you can see the different structures by looking at, at the thing. Right? I mean, yeah. The <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so G four is uh, unambiguous, although that's not obvious. Uh, and G5 is ambiguous. Now, uh, here's another example of an ambiguous uh, grammar. Uh, G2, it's on page 103 of your text. Uh, now, a bit of a reminder, uh, what, what was G2 about? That, that was the grammar that was generating uh, English sentences. Like, uh, you know, for example, you know, the boy sees and the girl touches the boy or whatever, right? So now, now I mentioned this earlier. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a lovely example in ordinary English of an ambiguous sentence. Right? The girl touches the boy with a flower. Now, if you heard that in ordinary conversation, um, you know, in a certain context, let me. Here's something, you may find this a little bizarre. Uh, the professor touched the student with the soldering iron, or with a, with a soldering iron, iron. The professor touched the student with 
the soldering iron, or with our soldering iron. So does that mean the student got burned? Or did the professor touch the student and it was the student who had a soldering iron? Yeah. Ambiguous. Okay. All right. Uh, now, uh, this particular grammar is another example of an ambiguous grammar, G2. Uh, remember, it was the grammar that generated sentences sort of like this. Now, this, this has uh, this sentence here, this, well, this string, if you like. Uh, and remember the, the terminal elements of this grammar? I think there are 27 of them, right? So the 26 letters of the Roman alphabet and the 27th terminal symbol was blank. Right? Here, blank, 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 blank. Okay? Which are useful to separate uh, the words. Now, uh, this, this uh, sentence, this um, string is ambiguous. Uh, it, you can uh, have two, at least two, well, two um, different pass trees for it. You know, d deriving, deriving this. Okay, two different derivations. Uh, and uh, is that example or exercise? It's uh, maybe I'm going to have to change that. It's ambiguous. <laughs> uh, well, 2.9 in the text is a theorem, so I guess this has to be an example. So, <coughs> so let me go to 2.9 in the examples, the problem session, at the end of the chapter, <coughs> and read it out to you. Show the string. The girl touches the boy with a flower. Has two different leftmost... Oh, you don't know what that is yet. Okay. In grammar... G2 on page 103. Describe in English the two different meanings of this sentence. Well, we've already done that. <coughs> done it twice, in fact. Okay. So uh, one of the one of the questions at the end of the chapter will be to derive this, <coughs> you know, draw two uh, different past trees <coughs> for for this. Okay. And observe the correspondence with the two different ways to interpret that sentence. Well, we, we've, we've done that. Um, well, we've done the two e different English meanings, but what we haven't done is match those, those two different English meanings, to the two different structures of the past trees that, 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 that we haven't done. Right? So, you know, you have, you have some work ahead of you to, to do that. All right. So next step now, uh, you've got some feel now for the notion of ambiguity. Uh, yeah. uh, same string with two different past trees. Right? Now we're going to formalize it, uh, make a formal definition of uh, what ambiguity is. Right? Now, uh, we need to, need to clarify things a little bit. You, you can have you can have the same string derived differently in the sense uh, the order of substituting the rules uh, may be different, but you get you get you, you basically you get the same structure. Uh, I don't know if that's clear or not. Uh, but if the parse trees are different, then that's said to be uh, that's that's what ambi ambiguity is. So, oh, so ambiguity is when uh, the same string has two different past trees. But that's not that's not the same thing as saying the the two derivations uh, are different. You you could you could have two different derivations, meaning, for example, when the order of the substitu substituting the rules is different, but uh, you still get the same past trees, effectively. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'll just go there.